Welcome to our Spanish missions walkthrough explain video. Let's jump into it. So when we left off from the last video, we were talking about the reasons for exploration. And so now we're going to kind of go from how do we go from here or from there to where we are currently right now. So what you'll know by the end of this one, we're going to review the explorers uh, Two. We're going to figure out what was why there was a rivalry between Spain and France. Three, what were the lessons that Spain learned from France? And then finally, what why was there a mission and presidio system? OK, so um, going back to trying to figure out, you know, we talked about previously ESPN. Um, and so I said then that the end was going to be kind of left off for now. And we really were going to focus on just the ESP part. So that brings us to our yes, economic, social, and political, right? So economic, gold, money, social, people, right? We've talked about that. Um, in this case, it's going to be God, people's religion. And then lastly, political. So talking about government, but more specifically in this case, clout. How are we going to get more power? How are we going to get more land? All right? So with those things kind of coming into the equation, we now are introduced to our European explorers of Texas. And there's four of them. So right now we're gonna focus on three of them because they, they came from the same country of Spain. So first up is our man, Alonso Alvarez de Pineda. All right, and so after Christopher Columbus comes in, discovers kind of that new world, um, then you see Pineda come in behind him. And so he's his job or what he's known for is going up the coastline in the Gulf of Mexico and mapping out the coastline, all right? And so, again, I don't really like to use that word discovered, um, but essentially he drew out that coastline, drew out that map. So for other, kind of open the door for other explorers to come in behind him. Um, and so as he's drawing that map, obviously he ends up being able to uh, claim Texas for Spain. All right, the most popular guy of all three of them, y'all boy, that's right. He's in the flesh. Cowhead. Cabeza de Vaca, right? So um, from our bilingual people, right? So if you don't know, Cabeza de Vaca means cowhead. And so um, not that we know this guy had a huge hair or anything, but he comes in behind Pineda. He actually uh, has a, a sh he's shipwrecked in Galveston, uh, right outside of Houston. And who does he find there? Obviously, who do we know lives in, in the Southern Plains or Coastal Plains, Native Texans? Anybody? I'll pause. Hmm. That's right, the Kuwankawas. So he cracked shipwrecks, lives with the Kuwankawas. They kind of show him around, show him how to live, that type of thing in this region. And then he goes through Texas, writing in his diaries, exploring about the interior of Texas and kind of reporting back what he sees. All right. Um, the last guy, Coronado, uh, you know, he's looking for the seven seas of gold. He's not as important um, than the than the first two, but um, but that's what he's known for, he's looking for the seven seas of gold in Texas. So in the end, were all the explorers ever able to find what they were looking for in Texas? So what does Spain think about Texas? So I'm gonna pause here for a second, kind of let you guys think about that. All right, and so saying that, your answer would be possibly, I don't know, let's find out. What Spain was looking for, they were looking for God, glory, and gold. So they definitely found land, that's for sure. They didn't find any gold, strike that out. And they didn't really say they tried to spread religion, strike that out. So really all they really had was land, and so therefore they really didn't have much use of Texas. So they kind of leave, they, they buy ah, ah, Texas, ah, ah, Texas, and they're gone. And here comes their French rival, all right, the takeover. And so that brings in our fourth explorer, LaSalle. LaSalle shows up and he's coming through and I call him Frenchy, long hair, don't care, you know, got the curls, right? And so he comes in and he discovers, oh, he explores the Mississippi River. He, he finds a land, names it Louisiana. And actually on his second run back around, he then builds Fort St. Louis. Um, in the summer of 1865. 
All right. So, like I said, he claimed Mississippi River for, for France and Louis and, and Louisiana. Uh, but the big deal here is is that he builds Fort St. Louis ah, in Texas, not Louisiana. And so this can kind of, this definitely cause a problem because as we just mentioned, or as I just mentioned, uh, Texas was claimed by the country of España, España, yeah. I said it right. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, sure, I did. Come on, I said it right. Right? Spain. Right? So, they get discovered by Spain. So, it's definitely a problem for France to come in and basically take over Texas. So, Spain learns a lesson. What they realize is we can't just explore and look, right? We can't just look. It's not going to work because if we just look, we can't claim the land. Somebody else is going to come and take it. So, they got to shift from exploration, I should say exploration, and shift over to colonization, all right? So they have to stay there. They're gonna have to figure out a way, what can I do to, to live there? And so that brings in France. France taught them that lesson that they're gonna go from exploration into colonization. So some of the things, just so you guys know, some of the things that are going on around this time is the Columbian Exchange. And really the main thing here, everybody, you can guys see that is that it's an exchange of between Africa, the Americas, and Europe, kind of different foods and spices and things like that that you really wouldn't be able to get in your homeland. And just imagine trying to eat the same thing every day, all day, uh, pretty boring. So having some new fresh fruits, spices, things like that definitely is was important. So now we see Spain coming back to East Texas, right? They realize now we have to colonize. We can't just explore. And so, at this time, they have wars going on in Europe. Uh, there's a, currently a land dispute between, as you can see here on the map, between New France and New Spain, right? And so the idea then is, is that they have to bring in these, or build these presidios. And these presidios are going to be built along their, uh, uh, their dispute or along their, uh, to protect their land in Texas. And so as they're building these forts, they're also going to use this opportunity to bring in missions. So they bring in these churches. And so the church are gonna be there, the friars, like we talked about before, the friars are gonna be there to spread religion to the natives. And so the presidios, the army people are gonna protect them from France and put up that kind of that wall of, of forts in Texas. Now think about it. So as these missionaries were coming in, we see Alonzo de Leon, he was the first military governor of Texas. They kind of like the head guy in, in, as it relates to uh, um, the presidios. Uh, Father Damon Massonet, he was like the first guy who comes in and, and he sets up San Francisco de los Tejas. So that's the first mission that's built inside of Texas, East Texas specifically. And the first mission, again, founded by Father Tejas. And then lastly, um, the most successful mission in Texas was set up by Father Antonio Miguel de Jesus. And this one um, near San Antonio uh, is most commonly known as the Alamo. All right. And so this was the most successful one. We're going to talk about why was this one so successful. Now, the San Francisco de los Tejas was a complete disaster. Um, they had crop failure. There was disease that was spread amongst the natives and the friars um, and mainly through the holy water. And so as they, as historians have gone back and read some of the information, essentially as you were going through, and as you can imagine in Catholicism, you're sharing the same cup, you're taking, um, doing different ceremonies. And so this was allowed disease to spread very easily amongst um, the natives and the friars. And so the natives didn't take too kindly to, you know, me trying to open myself up to your new religion and basically you're killing all of my people. So it, it, it definitely wasn't a good uh, entry point for Spain. Um, now, the lessons that they learned from that. Um, well, one, they learned they continued to strengthen their claims in Texas, right? Making sure those forts were solidified to keep them out of France, out of Texas. Um, they also learned that families are needed. You can't just have a soldier and a friar and think that, you know, they, that's a settlement, okay? A settlement's a city. A community. So they say we need to have come in families and be coming over and settling into these new areas. Um, and lastly, 
what made San Antonio's mission so successful, right? Ever been in San Antonio in the Riverwalk? That mission was near plenty of water. So not only is water good for us to live, obviously, duh, but it was also easier, much easier to get supplies to and from the fort. Whereas San Francisco de los Tejas is way out in the middle of the forest, in the piney forest, and it's very hard, very long and very hard to get to. And so they ran out of supplies and ultimately everybody died. But well, most everybody died. So then that allow leads us to finally the mission and presidio system, which again, we talks about having our presidios, our presidios are there to protect the missions, right? They're there to have to, to protect the livestock from Native American raids, um, as well as France raids against the church. And so it just talks about how this whole system um, kind of creates a whole little uh, area for Spain. And they kind of replicate this throughout Texas. All right. So that, that being said, everybody, uh, that's your kind of your walkthrough for, uh, uh, for your missions. Um, so now you now know the, from why Spain came to Texas, right? The reasons for exploration, what the lessons they learned from France, and then lastly, um, why they need to have a mission and presidio system, um, even in as far as created in Texas. All right. So at this point, um, you should be all caught up and I'll see you guys in class.